Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. This is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquis of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. Living Streams International, we meet behind the trade fair behind Zenith College, we meet on Sundays in the morning and Wednesdays for our evening service. This morning, I'm bringing you the marriage of two peas. Are you aware that in Matthew chapter 3, uh, verse 13, something very powerful uh, happens over there. Now, Jesus comes uh, to John the Baptist to be baptized. And when he came to John the Baptist to be baptized, that's in Matthew 3, John, John the Baptist, I mean, he was baptizing other people. And when Jesus came to be baptized, he said, no, 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 no. I, I, I should rather be baptized by you. And then Jesus made a statement. He said, no, 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 no. You know, earlier on, John had witnessed about Jesus. He said, the thong of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. And of course, John the Baptist had a very specific uh, uh, job description to prepare ye the way of the Lord and to make his path straight, to be a voice crying in the wilderness. And then Jesus comes to town and then John the Baptist said, no, 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 look here, you are the greater one. And here is even the thing. At one time when people even came to John the Baptist, he said, Jesus must increase and he must decrease. So he must increase and I must decrease. So John the Baptist was fully, fully aware of his position in terms of the hierarchy. When Jesus came to be baptized and then John the Baptist said, no, 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 no. You rather need to put me into the water. Jesus said, no. He said, no. And he gave a very startling, he said, look, it is important that all righteousness must be fulfilled. That Jesus Christ was saying, listen, the principle of baptism, the principle of the old, introducing the new, the principle of the old, becoming a platform for the new, must be obeyed. So I must go through the principle. I must obey the principle. I must submit myself to the principle. And the Bible said when he had made that statement, I think in Luke 2 also captures the same thing. When he had made that statement that the principle must be obeyed, he was put in the water and coming out of the water, the Bible says, as he was praying, the heavens were open. Now, I have heard a lot of theology and I've heard a lot of things. I mean, people say it was the prayer power of Jesus that opened the heavens. I agree, but I disagree. And my reason for agreeing and disagreeing, it was not just the prayer power of Jesus. So there are two Ps over there, the principle and the prayer. Now, first of all, Jesus said, let us obey the principle. Let us stick by the principle. All righteousness must be fulfilled. The principle must be obeyed. And after the principle is obeyed, praying makes it easier for the heavens to be open. So the reason for the heavens being open was that the principle was obeyed and the prayer was effected. So it is the marriage of two Ps, the marriage of the principle and the prayer. Now, many of us, especially, especially with the charismatics, many of us want for prayer. And for us, prayer is a solution for everything. And we run under the cover of prayer, break the principle, and expect that we'll pray our way through. So the things that we do are not commensurate or don't go in line in accordance with our prayer. So guess what? The prayer is, 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 is what we emphasize. The prayer is what we, we operate. The prayer is what we stand upon. What about the principle? What about the principle? And, and, and we uh, flagrantly just break the principle and expect that that prayer, it will work through. It doesn't go like that. He that breaketh an hedge, a snake shall bite him. And then sometimes the principle is very, very important. Guess what? Let me just say this, and that might be a little bit of a shocker. God doesn't watch over the prayer to perform. God doesn't watch over the prayers to perform. God watches over the principle. The Bible says he watches over his word. To perform. So God watches over the principle to perform. So don't substitute prayer for the principle. Stand upon the principle and open your mouth and declare the prayer. And the marriage, you see, the Bible doesn't say he watches over his, his prayer to perform. He watches over his word to perform. So those who stand upon the word, those who stand upon the principle, that is where it works. That is where, it's, it's, it, that is where success comes from. The Bible doesn't say 
uh, success comes by prayer. No, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Just read chapter 1 verse 8. But thou shalt study, meditate, and do the things that are written in it. And in so doing, thy way shall become prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. So it is predicated on the principle. Success, good success is predicated on the principle. Of course, that means then there's good success and there's bad success. So guess what? The marriage of the two Ps, the principle and the prayer, will guarantee open heavens. And here's the point. Not just open heavens, but there are three moves of God that the marriage of the two Ps produces. Number one, open heavens. That means a clearance in heaven. A clearance of spiritual wickedness in high places. A, a disintegration of spiritual opposition, just like in Daniel. You know, it, it just dissipates by the obeying of the principle and the prayer. And now guess what? So the, the heavens open, that means a clearance. That means easy access. That is prayer is just boom, boom, boom. There's no resistance in the heavenlies. Now the next thing that the Bible says, the Spirit of God descended uh, like a dove. That is empowerment. Divine empowerment comes through when the principle and the prayer is married. Divine empowerment comes through. And then the third one, the voice of God spoke and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So that is the voice of approval. Open heavens, empowerment, and approval. Approval doesn't just mean all that. That is a carte blanche that, man, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased because of the marriage of the two Ps. So you know what? You have been praying, 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 praying. Check the principle and marry the two Ps. See you later.